Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics revision. So we were doing this question in our last lesson, which is on Monday, and we were working with the shape. It said in the diagram, there was P, which was minus 317, Q, O, and S, right? With vertices of parallelogram. And then they asked us to do a couple of things. Like, first of all, they asked us to determine the equation of QP, which we did. It was y is equal to 6x plus 35. And they asked us to determine the coordinates of Q, which we did, which was minus 5, 5. Um, and now we're going to calculate the length of OQ. And it says leave your answer in simplified third form. So let's do that. Okay, so the length formula, the distance formula, the distance formula is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Um, and obviously you can choose any point to be 2 and any point to be 1. I'm going to choose this point here to be 2. So therefore the length of OQ is going to be the square root of 5, this is x, right, it's minus 5, minus 5 minus 0 squared plus 5 minus 0 squared, which is equal to the square root of minus 5 squared is 25, plus 5 squared is 25, which is going to be the square root of 50. And they've said leave your answer in simplified third form. So square root 50 is not simplified. You can either use your calculator or I'm just going to show you another way of doing this. What we do is we find the prime factors of 50. So we take 50 and we go, okay, fine. We've got two, two goes into 50, 25 times, right? Then, <gasps> Sorry about that, we just had a bit of a technical hitch. Okay, so then we got 5 goes into 25 5 times, and then 5 goes into 5 once. So do you agree that square root 50 could be written as 2 multiplied by 5 squared? 5 squared is 5 root 2. And that's what they want by the simplified form. They want you to write 5 root 2. Okay, now they want us to calculate the angle of size alpha. This size here, size alpha. Okay, now do you agree that if we can find the angle, this angle here, but the gradient of that is minus x, which means a gradient of 1 to 1. So we know that that angle there is 45 degrees, right? We know the gradient for this is 6 x to so the gradient is 6. So using that and the fact that tan theta equals m, we can get the gradient for, we can get this angle. And then all we have to do is go 180 minus 45 minus little angle and we will get this whole big angle here alpha. So let's do that. We're going to go second function tan of 6 to get the angle theta, so we need our calculator, so let's do that. And we're going to go shift tan of 6, close bracket, equals 80.53 or 80.54 for rounding off to two decimal places. I'm, I'm thinking that since the other one is a rounded off, we're going to round off this to a single decimal, so this is 81 degrees. So this theta is equal to 81 degrees. That means that that whole angle there is 81 degrees, right? So therefore alpha, alpha is going to be 180 degrees minus 45 plus 81. 
Okay, so again, we just need to get our calculator and go 180 minus bracket 45 plus 81, close bracket equals 54 degrees. So alpha is equal to 54 degrees. So there we go. This is 54 degrees. Now it says, if OS, this length here, let's just change color so you can see what I'm doing. If OS, the length of this is square root 148, okay? It says calculate the length of QS. Calculate the length of QS. Hmm. Okay, do you agree we've got this length here? This length we worked out to be 5 root 2. Okay, that there we worked out to be 5 root 2. This is 5 root 2. This is the square root of 148. Unfortunately, this is angle is 54 degrees. So we can't use a right angle triangle at all. Um, but we could use some other form of trigonometry. Um, you know, just let me think about this. We want the length. We want the length. So we could actually use the cards rule. It's only three marks though. I'm sure this is only 54 degrees, not 90 at all. Yeah, no. So the only way you can do this is using the cos rule. So it's going to be a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc uh, cos a, where this bit here would be little b, it really doesn't matter, and this is little c, and this is a, and obviously this big angle here is a. Okay, and we obviously need to use this angle that we've just worked out in this question here. So again, a squared is equal to 5 root 2 all squared plus square root 148 all squared minus 2 multiplied by 5 root 2 multiplied by square root of 148 cos of big A, which is 54 degrees. Sorry, can you just hold for a second? I seem to have a technical issue again. Just wait a second. Okay, that's better. You should be able to hear me a bit better. Um, I'm hoping. Okay, let's see. Right, now, what we're going to do is put this in the calculator. So, it is going to be bracket 5 root 2 bracket mm -mm, delete then we need to go this way Bracket, bracket, nope. Um, delete, delete. And then we need to go, there we go. Bracket, squared, plus 148. Mm -mm. 148 minus 2 multiplied by 5 root 2 bracket multiplied by root 148 
because 54 close bracket equals and that gets you 96.87 but then we have to square root that sorry but that is equal to a squared so now we have to square root the answer and that will give you 9.84 okay so therefore the length of qs is 9,84 units a is 9,84 units Right, so not too bad. Let's move on to the next question, shall we? In the figure below, P is minus 5B and this is 13. Do you agree that that means that as far as we're concerned, the X value of this is minus 5 and we need to find the Y value? Okay, and they tell you that R O P is alpha. Without using calculate, determine the value of cos alpha and tan 180 minus alpha. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is find the other side. So you agree that this is the hypotenuse and this is an adjacent side, but this is 90 degrees. So we can use Pythagoras and we can say y is equal to the square root of r squared minus minus 5 squared which is the square root of 169 minus 25, which is the square root of 144, which is 12. So therefore this is 12. So cos of alpha is exactly the same as minus cos of 180 minus alpha. Okay, the reason is if you look at your cast a diagram all stations to Cape Town cos is negative in this quadrant so therefore cos of alpha is the same as negative cos of 180 minus alpha so in other words this angle here so it's going to be minus cos of this is going to be adjacent of our part in use so it's minus 5 over 12 so it's negative 5 over 12 which is just 5 over 12. There you go. Tan of 180 minus alpha is this angle here. So therefore that is going to be tan of 180 minus alpha is the same as opposite over adjacent which is going to be 12 over negative 5 which is negative 12 over 5. There we go. Not too bad hey. Sure. Okay. So, this looks kind of scary, but we're going to do it all nice and slowly. And the reason that I copied this all in one go is because if you look at it, we've got five point two says consider this, then it says simplify, then it says hence or otherwise. So up to this point here, this is all one question. And then this bit here is another question, but we'll worry about that second bit later. So it's got consider sine of theta minus 360, sine of 90 minus theta, tan of negative theta, cos of 90 plus theta. Simplify to a single trig ratio. Okay, the first thing we need to do is get our cast diagram going. In fact, I'm not even going to write it over there. Um, I'm going to write it over here. So I've got space to write. All stations to Cape Town. Okay, sine of theta minus 360 is just going to be sine theta. Sine of 90 minus theta is just going to be cos theta because it's a co ratio. But this is in the first quadrant where everything is positive. Tan of negative theta is in the fourth quadrant where tan is negative. So it's multiplied by negative tan theta. I know I did a dot and a cross as well. I just really wanted to make sure you knew it is multiply. So let us make that just a dot. Okay. All over. Cos of 90 plus theta is in the second quadrant. So its co ratio is um, sine of theta. Okay, so this becomes sine theta. So do you agree this cancels with this? Okay, then you've got cos theta multiplied by negative sine theta over cos theta, which cancels and it becomes minus sine theta. Okay, 
Now it says, hence or otherwise, without the use of a calculator, solve for theta if theta is between 0 and 360, and this is equal to 0 0.5, it's equal to a half. Okay, so if we think about this, do you agree that you've got 60, 30, 2, 1, root 3? And sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So therefore, we would say that theta, if it has to be a half, is going to be 30, right? So we're saying it's minus sine of 30 degrees, the reference angle, the reference angle is 30 degrees, right? But it has to be negative in order for it to get to be a positive 0 0.5. So therefore it has to be in either this quadrant or this quadrant. So therefore the angle is equal to 210 degrees because it's going to 180 plus 30 or it's going to be 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. There we go. Right, now, moving on. It says prove that 8 over sine a squared minus 4 over 1 plus cos a is equal to 4 over 1 minus cos a. Okay, so whenever you're doing your proof, remember, remember, remember always that you can't assume that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. You have to, have to, have to always play with either the left-hand side or the right-hand side at one particular time, point in time. So let's start with the left-hand side. You've got 8 over sine squared a minus 4 over 1 plus cos a. Okay, but do you agree that we know that sine squared a is the same as 1 minus cos squared a because sine squared a plus cos squared a equals 1. So I can rewrite this as 8 over 1 minus cos squared a minus 4 over 1 plus cos a. But 1 minus cos a, cos squared a can be broken down into the difference of two squares of 1 minus cos a 1 plus cos a, okay, all over 8, minus 4 over 1 plus cos 8, okay, cos a. So we've got a common denominator here of 1 minus cos a, 1 plus cos a. So do you agree that we could say, well, okay, fine, this is going to be 8, minus 4 times 1 plus cos a. Do you agree? Which then becomes um, 8 minus 4, I'm multiplying it out, so that becomes minus 4 minus 4 cos a all over 1 minus cos a 1 plus cos a. This then can be simplified. 8 minus 4 is 4 minus 4 cos a all over 1 minus cos a 1 plus cos a. I can take out a common factor of 4 at the top here and I'm left with 1 minus cos a all over 1 minus cos a, 1 plus cos a. This cancels with this, and you're left with 4 over 1 plus cos a. There you go. Oh no, it's supposed to be a plus. Hmm, let me just check if I've done something wrong here. Um, that is a minus. And that is 1 plus cos a, so you're left with, oh, there's my mistake. Sorry, let me just fix this. That is going to be 1 minus, and then that'll be a plus. Yeah, okay, fine. And then we're just cancelling out the wrong one. All right. So, 
sorry, I made a mistake. This is one plus cos a goes into the CVC with one minus cos a, which means that, that becomes a plus. Therefore, this is a plus. Therefore, this is a plus, and that cancels with that, and then that leaves you with the minus at the bottom. Ta-da! Which equals the right hand side. Yay! Now it says for which value or values of a for the interval from a to 360 is the identity in question 5.3 undefined? Okay, so the identity is going to be undefined for all of these reason, these values. When, in other words, when sine squared a equals zero, or when one plus cos a is equal to zero, or when one minus cos a is equal to zero. So we're gonna find out shift sine shift sign if you don't already know of zero is equal to zero so when a equals zero plus k360 but they've only said from 0 to 360 so we don't have to do the plus k360 so we can ignore that or when cos a is equal to negative one so it's going to be shift cos of negative one close bracket equals is 180 so when a equals 180 degrees or when cos a is equal to one um delete equals which is also zero degrees so a is zero degrees so therefore when is this undefined at zero degrees or at 180 degrees there we go not too bad hey next question it says determine the general solution of eight cos squared x minus two cos x minus one equals zero. Now, a lot of people I know struggle with this. As soon as you see the cos squared x and the cos x, even if you realize it is a trinomial or quadratic, you still struggle. So what I'd like to suggest you to do is this. You let cos x equal k. Now you've got eight k squared minus two k minus one equals zero. Now, all we have to do is solve for k. So our factors of k are 8 and 1, 4 and 2, and our factors of 1 are 1 and 1. It needs to be minus 2. So therefore, it's going to be negative 4 because we're cross multiplying because 8 and 1 is definitely and positive 2. So therefore, it's going to be 4k plus 1. That's a 1 here. And then... 2k minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, we've got, now we can, if you want to write it out again, 4 cos theta plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, 4 cos theta is equal to negative 1. Therefore, cos theta is equal to negative a quarter. Okay, I'm going to do the other one down here. Or, 2 cos theta minus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, cos theta is equal to a half. Now, remember that we use these to find the reference angles, so we don't care about whether they are positive and negative. We just want to find the reference angles, okay? So we're going to go second function cos of a quarter. So you're going to shift cos of 0 0.5. No, let's try again. 0.25, that's a quarter, close bracket, equals, and that's 75.52 degrees, so that's 75, comma, 52 degrees, so worry about where, what the rest of the angles is in a second, or the reference angle of a half, oh, sorry, I'm getting mad, delete, equals 60 is 60 degrees right now we need to worry about a cost diagram all stations to Cape Town so therefore this is going to be um, 
60 plus K 360. Do you agree? That's fine. But now this one is negative, so we have to do it in the negative quadrants, which are going to be here and here. So therefore, theta is going to be 180 minus 75 comma 52 degrees plus K 360. Oh. Or it's going to be 180 plus 75 comma 52 plus K 360. Um, it's also positive over here, so therefore it's going to be, but that would be, yeah, or 300 degrees plus K 360. And there you go, there are your four options. Okay, I'm not going to work this out for you, you guys can do it on your calculator, 180 minus, 180 plus, and then 60, and in the fourth quadrant, it's 360 minus 60, which is 300 plus K360. There we go. Excellent. Let's move on. In the diagram below, the graphs of F, this is F, let's just mark this one as F, just to make it easier to see. And that is cos of X plus P. Okay. Sorry, let me just erase something. X plus P. Okay, whereas G of X is equal to Q sine X. So do you agree that Q is really easy to find because it's just something that's been flipped. It's a sine graph that's been flipped. So Q is very easy. Q is just minus one. So Q is just negative one and this equation is minus sine X. This one, we've basically shifted the graph over, okay? Normally the cos graph is at one at zero, but now it's zero at minus 45 degrees, okay? So in other words, what we're saying is cos of 45 plus P, okay, is equal to zero minus 45, minus 45 plus P is equal to zero. So do you agree that we've actually moved this over? What we have to do is add, move it over by 45 to get it back to zero, I mean back to one, okay? So we need to move this graph over by a minus 45 to get it back to where it needs to be. So therefore, therefore, P is going to be minus 45. You've got to think about this as being what we need to do to fix it. So therefore P is minus 45. So this is going to be cos of X minus 45 degrees. Okay, now the graphs intersect at minus 22.5 and 0.38. Determine the coordinates of B. Okay, so we've got cos of x minus 45 degrees is equal to one minute. It wouldn't be 180 plus 22, it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't need to do this, there's only two marks. Okay, um, what you need to realize is that this gap here is actually 180 degrees. Okay, that's 180 degrees. So therefore, that X value there is going to be minus 22 comma five plus 180 degrees, which is equal to 180, minus 22.5 equals hmm, 157,5 degrees. So that is going to be 157,5, but now we need to find the Y value 
And I'm pretty sure it's not going to be 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5, but what we're going to do is we're going to substitute it into minus sign x to find the value. So we're going to go minus sign of 157, comma 5. Um, and let's find out what that is. Actually, that's not, it's 0.38, sorry. Minus, I'm thinking it's going to be negative 0.38, but let's just check it. Um, so it's going to be sine of the answer equals 0.38. So this bit here is going to be minus 0.38. There we go. Excellent. Now it says, determine the values of x in the interval from minus 180 to plus 0, for which f of x, so wait, let me just change color here so we can see what we're doing. f of x minus g of x is smaller than 0. Another way you could write this is you could write f of x is going to be smaller than g of x. I'm just taking the g of x across. So they want to know for which values of x is f of x, the y value of f of x, going to be lower than the y value of g of x. Now, f of x is the blue thing. So do you agree that all the way from here to there, the y value of f of x is lower than g of x? There, they're equal. There, f of x is bigger. And over here onwards, f of x is lower again. So therefore, the interval is going to be, the values of x are going to be for x is smaller than this value here, which is minus 22,5 degrees and greater than negative 180 um, and equal to, or um, x is bigger than, no, let's just do it the same direction, shall we? It's smaller than or equal to 180 and greater than, what is this, 157 comma 5. And please note that this isn't an equal to, neither is that because they're actually equal to each other, those two points. So it's not smaller than, they're equal. Right, now it says the graph F graph F is now shifted 30 degrees to the left to obtain a new graph H. Okay. Write down the equation of H in its simpler form. So we're taking cos of X minus 45 degrees and we're adding a 30 degrees because we're now moving it to the left. So therefore it's cos of X minus 15 degrees. Then it says write down the value of x for which h has a minimum in the interval from minus 80 to 80. Okay, so do you agree that normally a cos graph looks like this? And okay, where this is 0, 90, 180 and 360 and this year would be negative 180 okay but now it's minus 15 which means that it's been shifted over by 15 degrees so therefore it's going to be 180 plus 15 right on the value of x going to be 180 plus 15 so it's going to be out of the sign in totally because it's between minus 180 and then it's minus 180 plus 15 is going to be negative 165 degrees and that's why there's only one value because 180 plus 15 moves that out of the way right moving on this year i'm not going to do this is a proof it is saying prove that in any acute angle triangle ABC sine A over A is equal to sine C over C. And you guys need to go learn your proofs, okay? They are in your textbooks. I guarantee your teachers work through these proofs with you as well. Or they explained them to you and then told you to go learn them. So please go and learn your proof, okay? We're obviously needing to use this proof, probably. Probably probably in this question. It says in triangle PQR, P is 132 degrees, PQ is 27.2, and QR is 73.2. Calculate the size of angle R. 
Okay, so yes, we are definitely looking at using the sine rule here. We're going to go sine r over the side, which is 27 comma 2, is equal to, I'm sorry, I need to cough, just hold on for a second. is equal to sine of 132 over the size of this length, which is 73 comma 2. Therefore, sine r is equal to 27 comma 2 sine 132 over 73 comma 2. So therefore, r is going to be second function sine of 27 sine 132 over 73 comma 2. Right, so let's pop that in our calculators. So we're going to clear and we're going to go shift sign of bracket 27 um, sign 132 close bracket all over 73.2 and then go all the way to the other side bracket equals 15.91 15.91 you'll notice all the other sides are one unit one decimal shall I say so I'm going to make it 15.9 so therefore r equals 15 comma 9 so this is, is 15 comma Oh, no, we're working at the angle. Sorry, this angle is 15 comma 9 degrees, and I'm actually going to round up to 16 degrees. Now it says calculate the area of triangle PQR. Okay, the area of a triangle is either half times base times height, or it equals a half AB sine C. So now we've just worked out this angle. We've got this side, we've got this side, and we've got these two angles. In order to work out the area using the trig rule, we actually need to work out that angle there. So Q is going to be 180 degrees minus 132 plus 16. I'm rounding it off to one decimal, I mean to the whole unit. So it's 180 minus 2 and 6 is 8, 148, which is going to be 42 degrees. Okay, so therefore this is going to be 42 degrees. And now we can use this side, this angle, and this side to work out the area. It's going to be a half times 27 comma 2 times 73 comma 2 sine 42. Right, so let's find that out, okay? So we're gonna say that it's equal to 0 0.5, let's go again, 0 0.5 multiplied by 27.2 multiplied by 70, no, 3, 3.2 2 multiplied by sine uh, 42 close bracket equals 666.13 so that's 6 6 6 comma 1 3 centimeters squared right and that's it for today grade 11s uh, please join me again um, next week Monday and we will continue with this. Have a great day.